The lesson that serves as the focus for our sermon this evening is last Sunday's Old Testament lesson from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 43. This is what the Lord says, who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there, never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the things of the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, my brothers, my sisters in Christ. A sentimental longing or wistful affection for the past, typically for a period or place with happy personal associations, otherwise known as nostalgia. Nostalgia is a powerful, motivating feeling. You know how you can tell? Turn on the radio, and you will be, you are, you will find tons of different stations that are embedded still in the past. If we weren't deeply connected, deeply fond of times gone by, of the former things, And why is there a classic rock station, 90s hits, 80s hits, early 2000s hits? No, nostalgia is a very powerful emotion. And there's nothing inherently wrong with it. You think about a time gone by, a song reminds you of a time in your life when you were maybe a lot happier, when you had a lot less on your plate, less on your mind. Every time I hear the lyrics, I'm blue, da ba dee, da ba die, my brain transports back into the the child that I was when I first heard that song. Doesn't that happen for you? And isn't isn't it just natural to think about times gone by and to long for those easy times again when a cheeseburger was 10 cents, when your kids could walk to and from school by themselves and you didn't have to worry at all The problem is, if we could transport ourselves back to whatever time we thought was better than the way things are now, are we positive that we are remembering it correctly? Maybe you transport yourself back to the day when cheeseburgers were 10 cents a piece, and you find that they are flavorless and super inferior to the, the burgers you can get now. Maybe you're always reminiscing or telling stories about, sir, about playing on the high school varsity football team, but if you could actually go back to the day when you were on the team, maybe you'd be reminded how stressed you were at the time about your grades to stay on the team. Maybe you think a lot about your college days. Oh, th- those were the days, right, when your social life was just at at full bloom, but if you could actually go back to your college days, maybe you'd realize that your friends were incredibly superficial and your relationships were not all that deep. Now, are we positive that if we could actually go back in time, that things would be as good as we remember them? But the other problem with that desire that we all naturally have is, of course, it's impossible. Time travel has not been invented yet, so there is no way that you can go back to the former things. No way you can go back in time, no matter how good things used to be, because time only moves in one direction, and that's forward. And the Israelites knew that. 
They were aware of that. In fact, that very fact brought them a lot of sorrow as they sat in Assyrian captivity. As they remembered the former things, the stories their parents, their grandparents told, which their parents and their grandparents told them, the story of the Red Sea, the story of when they escaped slavery in Egypt, and no sooner had they gotten out of Egypt than they were already trapped with their backs against this body of water. And Pharaoh and his army and his really expensive, terrifying chariots were barreling down at them. And it looked like the end. It looked like they had enjoyed their five seconds of freedom only to meet death on the battlefield at the hands of the Egyptians. But then God did something absolutely unheard of, absolutely amazing. He parted the Red Sea so that a wall of water rested on both sides and dry ground was in the middle. And the Israelites made their escape by walking on the ocean floor. And no sooner had the last Israelite passed than the walls of water crashed in on Pharaoh and his forces chasing after them. Not so terrifying, the chariots, as they were completely destroyed by those torrential waters, drowning the bloodthirsty Egyptian warriors. What an amazing display, right, of God's infinite power of his presence and of his wisdom. So what happened? The Israelites were forced to wonder as they sat in captivity again into a new foreign power, to a new foreign nation, the Assyrians. What happened? Well, they didn't actually have to wonder that much because, in short, they happened. What changed? What went wrong between this amazing event, the Exodus, and now that they were in exile in Assyria? What went wrong? They went wrong, as human beings always do. Nostalgia is a trap. It gets you, but it comes from a very human experience where you look at your current state of affairs. You look at your current situation like the Israelites and you see all the terrible things about living life right now that are particular to right now. You know, we think that the, the delusion of nostalgia is to think that there was a time in our lives that were perfect. A lot of folks, we say that, you know, kids have it so good. Kids don't have a worry in the world. But I have a four-year-old who will have a meltdown if I hand him the wrong Spider-Man toy. No stage in our lives is perfect because at no stage in our lives are we perfect. What went wrong? What's to blame for the state of affairs of the world today? I am. You are. Sin is. So deep is our guilt. So deep is our sin that we're willing to blame anything, even the passage of time, rather than accept responsibility for the things that we've done, for the ways that I've put more sin and more wickedness on the table instead of taking it off. The real trick, the real trap of nostalgia is that it keeps you trapped and unable to see the good things that are to come, right? Aren't we sick of every movie, every show coming out being a remake of a remake of a remake? Aren't we all crying out for someone to tell a new story, for someone to stop taking advantage of our nostalgia and try to make money off of it and finally give us something original, something brand new? Well, God's got that covered. God's got something new for you. From the God that brought you the Exodus, from the God that parted the Red Sea and allowed his people, his chosen ones, to pass on dry ground to safety and simultaneously escape certain death at the hands of Egyptians and escape slavery for life. This God is doing something brand new. That's his point in Isaiah. He's saying through the prophet Isaiah, you remember when I parted the Red Sea, when I created dry ground, when there was nothing but ocean? Well, the thing I'm going to do for you is so new and so amazing 
that it's going to be like the exact opposite. Not parting an ocean to create dry ground, but creating a body of water out of dry ground. Not saving a people who are trapped up against the body of water, nowhere to go, but saving my people who are out there suffering, dying of thirst, of spiritual thirst, by causing water to bubble up. This shows God's amazing power and control over nature, over time, over all things, but also his love and his commitment to you, his people. He's going to do something brand new. He's going to work a salvation unlike anything you have ever seen. He is not going to come into battle with a whip for the backs of his enemies. No, Jesus offers his back to be whipped by his enemies. He does not come riding into battle with a spear to run his enemies through to pierce them and kill them. No, he offers his hands and his feet to be pierced for you. And he isn't decked out in armor. He's not atop a mighty giant stallion. No, on Sunday we will witness our Savior ride into Jerusalem on what? A young donkey. Nothing much to look at. Because this is how the God of Israel, the God of you, works salvation. Brand new kind of salvation. Something unlike anything you have ever seen before. Something unlike anything you could come up with yourself. Because God is out for more than saving you from the discomforts of life in 2022 America. He is out for much more than saving you from your inconveniences. He's out for much more than just to transport you back in a day when you could get a cheeseburger for 10 cents. No, God wants and saves your soul. He's in it for eternity. He's in it to destroy and conquer and defeat your spiritual enemies, sin, death, and the devil himself. He's fighting for a lot more than just the good old days. So forget the former things. Don't paint God into a corner expecting him to just rehash old news again and again. He's doing something brand new. You'll know it when you see it. Jesus Christ won the war by laying down his life so that he could give you the hope of a better life to come. Don't be trapped by nostalgia to see it. See what is on the horizon, a final deliverance that Jesus is going to bring from everything wrong with this world, not just the, ma- the minor inconveniences, but every problem of sin that you have ever had to suffer. Jesus is bringing it, deliverance from it all. Don't be blinded, stuck in the past, too blind to see it. But if you hear that song again, and you are transported back into that time of your life, enjoy that little nostalgia ride. You start thinking about the hairstyles you used to have, the clothes you used to wear. Sure, that's fine. Start telling stories again. Just don't play that game with God. Forget the former things. Keep your mind focused and sharp on the things that are to come, the brand new salvation, the brand new kind of love he has for you. So when that song comes on, let your nostalgia run its course, but take an extra second to meditate on the wondrous things that are yet to come in your heavenly home that is guaranteed to you by your Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.